today we're going to be detailing part of my 2014 Tesla Model S P85D Ruby. While she looks beautiful at a distance, once we shine a light on her, we can see that the paint is actually in pretty terrible condition. We have tons of swirls, very hard water spots from sitting in front of a sprinkler, and just general grossness. To tackle this detail today, we'll be doing a waterless wash, clay bar to remove surface level defects, compounding to remove swirls and water spots, polishing to refine the finish and remove micro marring, and finishing up with a nice layer of wax. And to help with this detail that's happening at 11 p.m. at night is a bottle of the Mega Man Limited Bundle G Fuel that I'm finally enjoying. To start off this detail, we'll be using a waterless wash. The waterless wash system that I've been using for the better part of a decade is a mixture of O&R, optimum no rinse, in water at a dilution ratio of 256 to 1. The easiest way to get that dilution ratio is to just mix one ounce of O&R into two gallons of water and then keep it to the side to refill your spray bottle as needed. When doing a waterless wash, you'll want to spray the surface until it is sufficiently wet, ensuring that all the dirt and crud and whatever else has been soaked with the spray solution. O&R helps encapsulate dirt and debris and lift it from the surface so as to help avoid scratching the paint as you wipe away the dirt. After you've wet the surface, use a microfiber cloth folded into fourths and wipe the panel in one direction, avoiding using circular motions or back and forth passes. As the cloth glides across the surface, it will pick up the dirt and debris on the surface and embed in the fibers of the cloth. If you were to wipe in a circle or go back and forth, you'd be rubbing that dirt back into the paint, causing scratches and swirls. The next step we'll be going to will be to use our clay bar from AutoCan to remove surface level contaminants that are embedded in the paint. You want to do this step before compounding as you don't want the debris to get stuck in your buffing pads and then cause swirls, scratches, or any other damage while you're actively trying to remove imperfections. When using a clay bar, you'll want to spray the surface until it is very wet, almost to the point of dripping. The spray is the lubrication needed for the clay bar to glide across the surface and not stick, which would cause marring on the surface of the paint. The spray lubrication that I'm using is actually the same waterless wash solution I just used, the O&R solution. When using the clay bar itself, you'll want to knead it in your hands until you have a thin pancake of clay about the size of your palm. This is usually around a third of a bar of clay for most people. Once you have your pancake of clay, you'll want to use it along the surface of the paint, going back and forth on the surface, avoiding circular motion still. That's kind of a thing with detailing, avoiding circular motions. It stays true for most of what you end up doing up until the point of actually compounding and polishing. Anyway, you'll use this method going along each panel of the car, folding and kneading the clay as necessary whenever it gets dirty. Once you've gone over the whole area that you're working on, it's time to remove the excess lubrication solution from the surface. If you were working outside though, or in the sun, you'd be doing this panel by panel instead of, you know, half of the car at once like I'm doing here. After you've removed the excess liquid from the surface, flip your cloth to a clean and dry side, or grab a new cloth if the one you're using is too wet, and dry the surface the rest of the way. Here you can use back and forth or circular motions if it makes your heart happy. The focus here is to not have any liquid coming out of areas when we go to compound and polish, as that leads to very wet polish that slings everywhere and makes a huge mess.
On to everyone's favorite part, buffing and polishing. When using a brand new and dry pad, give it a single spritz of your waterless wash mix to prime the pad before adding your compound. You'll want to add 4 dime sized drops of compound to your pad and then, before ever turning your buffer on, touch the surface of the panel for the area that you'll be compounding with the buffer. After doing so, gently spread the compound around the area, which you typically only want to work in about a 2 by 2 foot area at a time, so as to avoid slinging large globs of compound everywhere. Make sure that your buffer is set to its lowest speed and turn it on while moving the buffer. Continue spreading the compound across your whole working area and then ramp up the speed to accommodate for your buffing pad and compound. The products we're using for this step are the Ryobi 18 volt Dual Action Polisher, Buff and Shine Euro Fiber Microfiber Pads, Meguiar's M110 Cutting Compound, and the Rag Company's Microfiber Cloths. Here we can see after just one pass with Meguiar's M110 cutting compound that we have heavily reduced the swirls and removed the water spots on this fender. The scratch is actually not a scratch, but just a compound trail from the microfiber cloth. Ignore that. Between passes, or between each panel, you'll want to blow out your pads to mitigate polish buildup and heat buildup. If a pad gets saturated with compound or polish, it will retain more heat, and the quickest way to kill a pad is via heat death. You don't have to use an air compressor for this, you can just use a stiff nylon brush to brush it out as well, but if you have the air compressor, I recommend that as it's much quicker and more efficient. Also, don't be like me, blow it away from the car, dust goes everywhere. In the interest of not making this video insanely long, I've sped up the compounding stage here by 5 times the regular speed. Some creators would say to cut out bits and pieces of the video, but I actually like to leave the whole amount of content there so others can see what goes into actually doing a detail on a car, specifically in this case exterior detailing with paint correction, as that's the main thing I focus on for my videos. The total time it took to just compound one side of the car was just under an hour, and I was aiming for 90 to 95% correction on the panels. 100% is rarely doable with just a dual action polisher. Usually it'll require either a rotary polisher or some wet sanding, and that's not something I really want to get into with this video. When it comes to compounding, you want to work slowly on your panels. Typically you want to move the buffer about one inch, every other second or so as you slowly move across the area. Be sure to avoid corners and edges as even a dual action polisher can burn the edges and remove clear coat in a matter of seconds. You'll want to apply light to moderate pressure, enough that the pad begins to compress under the pressure but not so much that the pad does not spin. Remember, if the pad is not spinning, then it's not doing any work. Let's talk about the products being used here. So on the compounding step, we're using Meguiar's M110 Cutting Compound that is designed more so for dual action polishers. It has a longer working time than 105 and it dusts less, though it will still dust as you work with it, which you'll see as I get to the rear quarter panel. I could have mitigated the dusting by spending more time blowing it out or by swapping out the pad with a new one at that point, 
The dust is dried compound coming off of the pad. There is an accompanying polish to go with M110, which would be M210. However, I have not seen a reason to buy it as 205 works beautifully. I will eventually grab some and see if I can find what the actual differences are in the two polishes. we come to an end for the compounding stage. It's now time to move on to the polishing stage, 
we're going to be using the same type of pad, but a brand new one. The joy of these Euro fiber pads is that they are able to do both compounding and polishing. Just anytime you change products, make sure to grab a new pad. Mixing products contaminates pads and that's not ideal. We're using M205 for the polishing step, which has an insanely long working time. So long in fact, when not working in direct sunlight that is, you can get the whole side of the car done before ever buffing off the polish. The polishing step is notably quicker than the compounding step. With polishing, you're aiming to reduce any marring or minor surface imperfections still left over from the compounding step. Polishes typically can't remove more than the finest of scratches, and you don't want to be chasing scratches with a polish. If there are still surface imperfections that you find during the polishing step that you want to remove, go back to the compounding step for that area. It's not uncommon to do two or more compounding passes when aiming for more than 80% correction. Polishing is done at around 3 to 4,000 RPMs on most dual action polishers, which stops them from heating up nearly as much, so it's less stressful on your pads, which is always nice. You still work rather slowly, but at about double the pace of compounding. So, you know, one inch for every second or so. You also need very little polish to go a long way. To do this whole side of the car, I believe I used 12 dollops of polish, which makes a bottle of M205 last years. I bought a gallon about a decade ago, and it was honestly the biggest waste of money I think I've ever done, only because I don't think I'll ever use all of it. I only refilled a new bottle because my last bottle broke, wasting about a quarter of the polish that was still left in it. So do with that as you will. It's still one of my favorite polishes and I've been working with it for over 13 years. Ultimate Compound is my go-to for quick and easy 60% correction one passes and I have videos on that. And M110 and 205 are for 75% plus correction. Total time to polish this side of the car was about 20 minutes, so notably quicker. After we finish compounding and polish, we can see that we have a beautiful finish that's ready for some protection, which, since I'm not ready to ceramic or graphene coat this whole car, will be with Colonite 845 Wax. Buff and Shine does make a pad specifically for applying waxes, however it's so rare that I ever use a wax, I didn't buy it, so instead we're using a black Hexlogic wax slash sealant pad. Colonite 845 is an amazing wax and will be the only wax that I personally will use. I discovered it around the same time I discovered the M105-205 combination, so 
13 plus years ago, and it's still the same bottle. This stuff just lasts for so long. It offers about five to seven months of protection on a car though. Four small dollops on the pad can do almost this half of the car. I had to apply two more dollops to finish up the rear quarter panel and the trim over the door. 845 does thicken up in cold weather, so if you're planning to use it, either set it in the sun to liquefy it, or leave it in a cup of hot water for 10 to 15 minutes, and then shake it up once it's done. Application is super simple, and should be done at around 1000 RPMs on a dual action polisher. It can also be done by hand, but if you have the pad and the polisher, put it to work. Once you have the whole area you want covered, let it sit for 5 to 10 minutes before wiping it off. Colonite is able to be layered as many times as you want, but it is recommended to wait 12 hours between layers. With that said, it's time to buff off the wax, which you will do with a new and fresh microfiber cloth. Wipe off in one direction, flip the cloth over, and buff it out. Now, the keen eyed among you will notice that I miss compounding underneath the mirror, and you're correct. I need a different polisher to actually be able to get into that section due to how tight of a spot it is. That's one of the other reasons we're not ceramic or graphene coating the car yet either. that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you have any feedback, by all means, let me know. But as always, if you like the content I'm putting out, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all new content as it comes out. Thanks so much for watching, take care.